In the previous video, we studied a neural network with one hidden layer of neurons. In this video, we show you how to build even more complex models with additional hidden layers. We're going to adapt our single hidden layer model into a multi-layer model known as a deep neural net. Then we'll discuss choosing how many neurons and how many layers to use. Finally, we'll train the model itself, being patient as this may take a while to compute. Remember when we added a hidden layer of neurons to our logistic regression model? Well, we can do that again, adding another layer to our single hidden layer model. Once you have more than one layer of neurons, we call this a deep neural network. But everything we learned before, we can apply now. As in video 2.2, you should make a fresh Python session and execute the code up to num hidden one in this video's code file. Then the fun starts. Let's start by changing the old num hidden to be num hidden one to indicate the number of neurons on the first hidden layer. Make sure to change the variables defining the weight and bias variables as well. Now we insert our second hidden layer. Let's use one with 32 neurons this time. Note how the shape of the weights must account for every one of the 128 intermediate outputs from the previous layer coming into the 32 inputs or neurons of the current layer. But we initialize our weights and biases essentially the same way. And we create the H2 output with a sigmoid function just like we did before with a matrix multiply, addition, and function call. For the output logistic regression layer, we just need to update the variable names. These are now the third set of weights, and of course the shape must match the output of the preceding hidden layer, so 32 by 5. Don't forget to update the model function y with the h2, w3, and b3 variables. You wouldn't want to update all the code only to use an old model. You might be wondering how we decided on 128 neurons for the first layer and 32 neurons for the second layer. The truth is that determining a good size and shape of your network can be a challenging problem. Though it may be computationally expensive, trial and error is one way to develop a model. Typically, you might start with an old model and work from there. Here, we started with the single hidden layer of 128 neurons and tried adding a new layer underneath. We want to compute some features to discriminate five classes, so we should keep that in mind when picking a number of neurons. Generally, it's better to start small and work your way up to a minimal model that explains the data. If a model with 128 neurons on the top layer and eight neurons on the next layer does poorly, that may indicate that we need more features for the final layer and should add more neurons, not fewer. Try doubling the number of neurons in the final layer. And of course, it's good to go back to earlier layers and tweak the number of neurons there, too. Likewise, you can change the learning rate of the optimizer, which changes how much the weights get adjusted at every step, and even change the function used for optimizing. Setting all these values is called hyperparameter optimization, a hot topic in machine learning research. Note that we're essentially starting from the simplest possible model, logistic regression, and slowly adding on new features and structures. If a simple model works well, it may not even be necessary to spend time on something more advanced. Now that our model is specified, let's actually train it. Again, we need to redefine our training nodes in the TensorFlow graph, but these are exactly the same as before. Note that because our first hidden layer now hooks into another layer of neurons, we have many more weights to compute. Before, we had 128 times 5 weights, but now we have 128 times 32 weights, over 6 times as many for this layer, and this is on top of the initial weights from pixels to the first layer of neurons. One downside of deep neural nets is they can take a while to train. Here, we're going to run for 25,000 epochs to ensure the weights converge. This may take an hour or longer, depending on your computer and GPU. While this might seem excessive, professional machine learning researchers often train models for up to two weeks. You might learn quickly, but the computer takes a while. 
we'll evaluate how well this model did in the next video. In this video, we built and trained a truly deep neural network using TensorFlow. Many professional machine learning models are less complicated than what you've written already. In the next video, we're going to explore the results of our multiple hidden layer model.